Hi, everyone. All right, we were just ironing out some glitches off to the side there. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it all works. Um, so very happy to be here today. Um, my topic for this particular conference is social shopping. Uh, for every woman, I think it's very obvious why. Uh, but it's also because that's where I see the next frontier of uh, shopping to lie, that intersection of e-commerce and social media. So without further ado, let me just kick off today's session. Uh, my title of my presentation is uh, Beyond Group Buying to Delighting and Incentivizing. Uh, I think there's a lot of buzz in the news about uh, Groupon, and so that inspired me to think about what could come beyond Groupon, or what should a company like Groupon be doing to extend the experience for the consumer. So um, I started out my career as uh, an interface designer for Bell Labs in the mid-90s. And then I spent some time in consulting and progressed uh, on to uh, be a creative director at Sapient in New York. And my most recent gig is AKQA. So I come from um, a mixture of backgrounds. I'm part geek, part engineer, uh, but have worked my way through the more creative side of things as well as marketing and advertising. That's what I love the most about user experience as a discipline because it is so multifaceted. So as I let the screen behind me scroll, uh, I think it's very self-explanatory. We all know what the company is about. We all know what Groupon represents and how it's going to make people a ton of money. Um, but what has also interested me is how Groupon is often used as an example of uh, social shopping at work. And when I think more about it, I start to doubt that um, because there are elements, you know, desperately that you, you, would, you would seem to think makes it a perfect example for social shopping, but re really it isn't because it hasn't um, exploited all the benefits of channels um, and how people are interacting on them. So to that end, I always take this moment to really pause and relook at the relook at the status quo, question the status quo. I stop, I look, and I think about what the future could hold for a company like Groupon beyond, you know, when all the excitement dies down. And most importantly, I also like to listen. I like to listen to what consumers think. I like to observe and make uh, intelligent leaps about what I think the path forward might be. So if you, if you pause and analyze what uh, Groupon is all about, it's leveraging concepts that are very uh, familiar to us. So we're all very uh, familiar with the concept of buy one, get one free. In the US, we call it BOGO. And we're also very familiar with the concept of wholesale. When more people buy, you drive the price down and you get it for a deal. Um, and certainly you get it for the thrill of the deal as well. Who doesn't like to buy something extreme at an extremely good price? Now that said, if we take a look at the Groupon screens and start to get into the psychology of it, there are signs that are trying to help you validate that you're making a great purchase. So it's giving you very clear buy signals, uh, the thing that's being offered is usually at a deep discount, 50%. It's not uncommon. Uh, if you can't figure out if you need it, it's telling you, you know, buy it for a friend. Um, it's giving you a sense of scarcity, the, f the fact that the clock's ticking and there's a finite number of things that are on sale and that you've got to jump now to get on it. And it also gives you a sense of transparency, which I appreciate and I think it's, it's novel. It's telling you how many people have bought and uh, you know, it, it's giving you a sense of when the deal's gonna close. So if you know you're close to it, uh, you clo you're close to making the cut, then you will enjoy the benefits of the deal as well. Now, but there are things in Groupon that aren't exactly social. So I've bought things on Groupon before, and I'm, I'll be the first to admit I bought cupcakes, but there really was very little interaction between me and other consumers. All I knew was that a certain number of people had to buy it, and I would walk away with the same deal. So it, it really does make me question, and it goes back to the stop and the look and see what other people are doing in the social commerce space and to think critically about what the definition of social shopping is. So when you, when you break it down, social shopping is all about, oops, sorry about that. Um, 
type, typeface has got switched in the process. It's really about the combination of social media and commerce, the coming together of those two components. I've encountered a ton of definitions, but the one that I go back to is the one that says it's about bringing shopping to where people connect, and it's bringing connection to where people shop. So for that re those reasons, uh, you'll see why Groupon hasn't fully exploited it, but it also lays the path forward about what the future holds for us in that space. Now, listen, as I mentioned, was my favorite part of, of any questioning process. Um, so as I was putting together this presentation, I was inspired to go back to my video archives. Um, as a user experience designer, I believe in the power of research and the power of what your consumers are telling you. So some of the clips that I'm going to show you right now um, came out of the cutting room floor, but I think what it shows you is the frankness as well as uh, the directness of what consumers are telling you they need. And this was done as part of the process of a redesign of a very, uh, very well-known um, fashion e-tailer in the U.S., a very well-known brand. Um, and I'm going to... Hope and pray, so please. I'm going to let you listen to her speech. I'm interested in fashion, um, mostly because it's just fun. Uh, it's a way of self-expression. And I also find with fashion, it's sort of like a sense of belonging. Because if you read a lot about fashion or you know what the trends are, if you're on the street and you see someone wearing something cool, you understand that they're in the know also. Or if you're wearing something you just got, you feel like it's trendy. Someone else gives you a compliment. It's kind of like. It's like a secret club. Um, so what, uh, in terms of fashion, who or what inspires you? Um, I get a lot of my inspiration just from like reading street style blogs or um, just like films, anything out of the ordinary where you just find something you're like, oh, I really like that style or um, even just like color compositions that you see day to day, you can incorporate them into your own style. So this particular um, user that we invited to speak with us wound up being a very, very much a prototypical source of inspiration for us when we talked about how we should start to design uh, social uh, shopping experiences within the e-commerce site. And we also brought in a few other people, and this is just a really quick compilation, because what I'm going to do now is take some of what you've heard and show you examples where Co uh, competition in the uh, industry are picking up on these needs and churning out some really innovative solutions for social shopping. So this is like, a, I've always had an interest. A summary. Uh, it's my career. It's my passion. It's my love. To me, um, it's the most personal form of expression um, and a stress reliever as well. I'd say that my passion is a reflection of myself. So there are four key themes that I wanted to show you as examples of what you can learn from research and have that be your, your source of uh, inspiration for, for design. The first one is fun. You heard that word. When this lady goes online, that is the expectation that she's bringing onto a site. So that's the same expectation when she's bringing with her when she's shopping for clothes. Um, now, fashion is fun. And so let's think about how we can use that to the advantage of an e-commerce or social commerce experience. Now, what happens if you turn fun and look at ways to prolong the fun? Give people reason to hang around because research has shown that the more people, the more time people engage with uh, a site, a tool, but something that's fun for them, if there are e-commerce opportunities woven in between, that there is a high likelihood that they will start to purchase more. So this is a company, I'm sure some of you have seen this before, it's Polyvore. It's a company that, uh, it's a site that was um, launched about a year ago. And what that does is it gives reason for people who are fashionistas to be able to come online and pull together sets of looks based on things that they find anywhere on the website, not just clothes. Um, but along with that comes the data against those objects. So um, you can create uh, mood boards of, of items, and you, you don't have to buy them right away, but they're at your disposal at the time that you want to move ahead and make a purchase. 
So just to give you an example of what happens, so the screen on, on top there shows you what happens if um, you start collecting pieces as you troll through the site. And the piece below there was something that I created, but I created this set of, of objects, including an unexpected item like a guitar, but I wanted to create an elegant rock and roll look. So this is an example where you're able to prolong the fun that people are having online and use that as a way to intersect with shopping. Now, the next thing that you heard a lot in these uh, interviews was a sense of belonging. Everybody wants to be part of a tribe. And if you identify to have a certain characteristic, you know, in the social world, you want to find more people like you. So how about turning a sense of belonging to finding others with the same style? It's a very easy concept, but think about the possibilities of that as you expand that into design. So the same example, Polyvore. Now that I've pulled together my own set, I'm being presented with other people who have very similar tastes, you know, the items are tagged, they're categorized, they're described, but now I suddenly have this whole other world of things to consider buying. So in many ways, Polyvore has become almost a secondary storefront. It's a place for you to hang out, to find other people that you might want to follow, but it's also another starting point for you to go shopping. One more example, Levi's. Levi's has started to uh, apply the open graph of Facebook, so they're now able to pull in information about your friends who might have indicated that they were fans of Levi's as well. And so this is an example. I have seven friends who have also expressed an interest uh, in Levi's. And when I'm actually on the Levi's store itself, of course, I gave it permission to pull that information. But now I'm pre presented with this landscape of information that was previously unavailable to me. So for example, if I see someone else who might be eyeing the same pair of jeans as I am, them, I might be having conversations with that person either online, on chat, or even in real life. But again, this is a very compelling example of how you help someone find the extended community sharing the same taste. Because as you know, in fashion, taste is extremely difficult to pin down. It's hard to describe, but it's, it's tools uh, and features like this that help you get closer to the things that apply to you things that you will probably uh, have an interest in. Stress reliever. You heard one of the uh, users. She says, uh, you know, shopping is a stress reliever. Now take that concept of relieving stress and let's turn it into ex an experience where you now make your consumers watch and then buy. So it, it, it takes the, the, you have to pound the streets and go find something, or you have to troll the websites to find something, but it's having you adopt a lean back approach, and it's almost like you're just browsing and you're relaxing, and if something catches your eye, that's the thing that you may choose to engage with or purchase. So a good example of this is French Connection. This is extremely new. They've just launched the first ever um, store on YouTube that lets you buy through a video. So I won't play the video, but um, I think you can imagine you've got uh, a space on the, on the screen that has someone, almost someone curating a look for you, walking you through selections, and then you can uh, proceed to shop. No different than if you were shopping through product categories or product details, but all that is happening on screen as part of the video. So it's changing the experience. It's letting you watch and then purchase after that. Now, this is Home Shopping Network, which is a very popular way that Americans shop. But um, they love, you know, a lot of Americans love sitting at home in their pajamas and they're watching TV. And then if they see something they like, that's how they buy. Now, Home Shopping Network Arcade, which is the game section of the site, has come up with this hypothesis that if you're spending time online playing games, which they found in their research that a very high percentage of people do spend their time playing games. Now, what happens if we start to intersect those two worlds? What happens if we create this site where you can earn credits as you're, you know, you're, you're playing the game, so you're pitching someone else in the community against a game. So the one that you're seeing on top here is an example where you're supposed to spot the differences in a certain amount of time. 
but it's giving you the opportunity to relax, um, to maybe engage with someone in the community, and then to actually be able to view what's on TV in a 50-second delay in that little screen on the top right, where you've got those two women sitting behind a counter. So these are all innovative ideas, but it's, again, inspired by people who want to just uh, relax as part of the shopping experience. The fourth one that we heard was reflection of self, and I think a lot of you can relate to that. You wear what you wear because it says something about who you are. There's a sense of identity that's uh, attached to it. Now, taking reflection of self and turning that into experience, you see tons of examples where you are able to post information, but in addition to that, you're also able to personalize. So, retailers should re really be taking notice of that. So how do you personalize the ex experience so that when you come online to shop, it feels as if it was a shop that was opened exclusively for you because you have told them what are things that interest you, what are tastes, what are tastes that are reflective of your personality. So a good example of that is Caboodle, and that's a very popular, that's a very popular site uh, in the US. Um, and what that does is it lets you indicate your preference of brands that resonate with you. It then lets you, um, it, it creates this customized page. It gives you the ability to look at other curators of style. In this case, uh, the person featured there is not a model. She's a real person who has actually taken on the task of being a very active contributor to the community. So uh, Mamer's her name. You're able to see Mamer's selections. You're also able to see information about those items. So in this case, the painted jumper, you can buy that at zara.com. So again, it's making sure that there is a follow through from a social element through to a commerce element. It's also giving you the ability to um, buy things through lists that she might put together. She clearly is a fashionista. She might put together style boards that combine clothes with cosmetics, with shoes and bags. And the feature set just goes on. But this is exactly where we need to go as designers. The element of delight is what will give you uh, longevity in your uh, social shopping solutions. You know, she's even got a help me choose, you know, uh, which, which shoe is the right one for her. So you're constantly engaging with your community to get them to spend time and to converse. Um, and of course, typical, typically you would find followers of that particular um, uh, curator of fashion. So in addition to stop, look, and listen, the, the one last thing I wanted to make sure to leave you with is to think. So it's not enough to just to stop to look and listen, but it's the next step that you're going to take to think about how you should apply those findings. So we talk a lot about content uh, generation. and all of these examples, there is content. Whether the content is coming from the, the retailer themselves by way of photographs or descriptions, or, or really content is also what you write and contribute as a user. It's also the things that you put together as sets. You might have used the content that were provided by the e-commerce uh, provider, but by putting them together in different ways and configuring them, that is content as well. Now, in this world of open access to content generation, how do you ensure that content is of high quality? And I think that takes us to the next uh, notion of incentivization. So think of incentives as a built-in way to ensure that quality is being uh, maintained and that people are being rewarded for making relevant uh, contributions and um, recommendations. All right, so this is something very innovative in the US, it's just launched. Uh, the key here is that when people recommend an item, they're being incentivized, in this case, uh, in cash. So if you post, a link to an, you post a link to an item and any of your followers goes through with it and purchases the item, you'll see that this person's tally um, increases. So this person has made almost $2,500 by recommending relevant things. Uh, badging is yet another way you can acknowledge. So really at the end of the day, I think thinking about new business models is where all of your heads should be at. Um, think about ways that you can challenge the existing retail setup. 
why can't someone like Neymar, that fashionista just now who was extremely, um, you know, she was extremely uh, well informed in the fashion world, why can't she be the one to almost host a retailer shore, uh, st storefront? So it's maintaining a brand, but it's giving her spin on it. So those are ideas you should be thinking of as designers as we push this uh, to the next frontier of social shopping. So just a few parting words, social shopping is clearly here to stay. We're really looking at ways to create delightful experiences for all our consumers. And the way to do that is by giving them quality, trustworthy information. Thank you very much um, for your time.